Hi, my name is Daniel Odio, and I am going to make a guide to show PC users how to use a Mac. So the, uh, the title here is A PC User's Guide to Using a Mac, and my website is danielodio.com. That's my personal site. You can go to my blog, which is blog.danielodio.com. Let me just type it here, right here, blog.danielodio.com for more tips and more details on my experience using a Mac. So let me first just tell you what I really like about uh, the Mac versus the PC and one of the main things is that it doesn't crash nearly as often and when I turn it off, uh, you know when I shut it, it turns off and when I open it back up it turns on which my Dell laptop could never seem to do. There are um, some things that were very strange for me when I was first um, using the Mac and one of them was applications so um, let me go ahead and, and open up it's called the .dmg file you know that, that those are um, the applications and what I would find was that uh, let's see if this is gonna do it this might not do it but they would usually tell me to um, to drag the application into the applications folder and I never could understand what that meant let me see if I can find one that does that. I'm just going to look at my... Let's look for something called Thunderbird, which I had uh, installed earlier. Hold on a second. Just get to it here. Thunderbird. So I think this may do it. Let's drag this out of the trash onto my desktop. And I'm going to double click on it to open it up. Close this guy here. No, that's not what I wanted. Well, at any rate, a lot of times when you try to install an application, it's going to tell you to uh, to just drag it into your applications folder. And I never quite understood what that meant. But you literally, to install an application on your Mac, you just drag it into the applications folder. I mean, it really is that easy. And um, I'm going to go ahead and put Thunderbird back in the trash here. So to get rid of something, you just put it into the trash can like this, and that gets rid of it because I'm not using Thunderbird anymore. Um, so down here are all the different applications that I have installed, but that's not all of them. That's just the ones that I use most often. And you'll see this little line here. Okay, to the right are uh, applications that I have open currently, and to the left are just all the applications that are on the computer. So that was a little confusing to me. So let me go ahead and open up the Applications folder. And one way that you can find anything on the Mac, in the top right corner, there's a little searchlight here called Spotlight. And I'm just going to search for Applications. And it will find the Applications folder for me. And it, you can see here it, sh it shows everything. It shows messages, PDF documents, etc. And here is the Applications folder. So I'm going to double click on that. And one nice thing about the Mac is this scrolling utility that will allow you to scroll through everything that's in the folder. So you see the folder list down here, but up here it's just scrolling through it all. It's kind of neat. And down here is your applications uh, list of applications. So on a Mac, to get rid of an application, all you do is just drag it out of the applications folder to uninstall it. And you can, for example, drag it into the trash, which I'm not going to let go here. And then to reinstall it, you just put it into the Applications folder. That, that just seems so easy to me. I was used to having to go through a bunch of steps to uninstall an application. So that's one thing. One tool that I use all the time is called Quicksilver. And you'll see up here the little Q. That's Quicksilver. It's hard to describe exactly what Quicksilver does or why it's so useful, but I'm going to give it a shot. It's basically a set of shortcut keys that I press on my keyboard in order to do really anything on the Mac. So for example, when I press Control and Spacebar, it brings this little box up, which will do anything. For example, if I want to go to a web page, I just type www.drodeo.com. For example, that's my web page, and I press Enter. And it will open Safari, which is down here. Now you can see there's a little dot under Safari, meaning that Safari, the Safari application is currently running and then it'll it'll go to the site that I specified. Or if I were to press control spacebar to bring up Quicksilver and I were to type for example mail, then it opens up my mail program. So you can see up here 
that mail's now running, and here are all my emails. I'll, t I'll talk more about mail later. I'm going to go ahead and minimize mail by clicking on the, or on the orange circle, and that makes mail go down here. One thing that's confusing, really confusing on a Mac, is that I, if I look up here, I can see that it still says mail, but if you try to find the mail window, you're not going to see it anywhere because it's been minimized, and that's really confusing at first. So if you have a program running, like for example, mail down here has a, a little dot under it, so it tells me that it's running, but you don't see it anywhere, it's because it's been minimized. So I, by clicking on the mail icon over here, I just maximize the window again, and I'll go ahead and minimize it again, and you'll see that it's going to kind of go away. And now it's down here in the dock. So one real big difference between Macs and PCs is that you can have a program running, and yet you don't have a, any sort of actual window for it, which, you know, with a PC, if a program's running, you're going to see it actually on your desktop. But with a Mac, that's not necessarily the case. And even when it's running, it might not be maximized to the size of the full screen, which I found really disconcerting. Like, for example, if I were to change the size of this mail window, okay, I've got mail running, but it's, you know, it's not a full size th uh, application. I mean, I have other things that I can see on my desktop. And honestly, after a year of using the Mac, I, I haven't, still haven't gotten quite used to that. I, I really, for some reason, prefer that when an application is running, it takes up the whole screen, which by pressing the green button, I can maximize it and make it do that. But even now, you'll see that it doesn't go down past the dock, so there's still a little bit of space at the bottom of the screen where the where the underlying application shows through. And that's just completely different than a Windows application, and I had to get used to it. But that's how a Mac works. So for example, right now, I, I'm on the Mail application, I'm moving it around, so it says Mail up here. But if I were to click on this yellow sticky, then it's going to say Stickies up here, because now I'm in the Stickies application, and you can see that it's above the Mail application. So now if I click on Mail again, it comes to the, to the front, and now it says Mail at the top left. So if you're not sure what application you're actually working in, an easy thing to do is to uh, look in the top left corner and see what it says. So getting back to Quicksilver, Quicksilver is um, is great. It's a a handy tool. I can also get the folders. So if I type, for example, documents, you'll see that I don't even have to type the whole thing. If I type doc, then it's guessing as to what I'm mean to type, and it even shows here everything that kind of fits the doc word. In case I want something else, I can just move left and right, or sorry, up and down to choose that. So I'm going to double click on documents and it's going to open up my documents folder. And, and again, I can I can open it up, or sorry, scroll using this. And one nice thing is I can completely preview what the document is. So I'm going through all the different documents that I have by scrolling on this bar here. And I can even, for example, open up one of the documents. Let's see, if, let me find something that's not an image. So for example, this is a, a, a PSD file or it's a, a, a JPEG Im image file. But if I find something like a PDF, I can even open it up without having to actually open up the entire program that runs it, which is great. So I can open up a PDF without having to, and let me try to find one so I can explain what I mean. So for example, this is a PDF. Do you see these little, there's a arrow left and right. I can actually scroll through the PDF. I'm, I'm going to maximize it so it's a bit bigger here. So here's the PDF, and I'm going to scroll through this PDF without actually opening the PDF document to really see this. If I want to do that, I just double click on it, and it'll open up. So that's pretty handy. And here's the actual document here. By the way, one of the other programs that I really like is called PDF Pen. It doesn't come standard with a Mac. You have to download it. The company is called Smile on My Mac. It's the company that makes PDF Pen. And we can just Google it. 
it's a, it's a great tool, for example, uh, because it, it really manipulates PDFs very well. One thing that I use it to do is to stamp signatures. So here's my signature, and I can stamp it directly on a document, and it's transparent, which is great. So I can use this to digitally sign contracts, and no one even realizes that I stamped a signature on. It's very handy. Um, it also has different views, so if I want to see this PDF, uh, you know, all the pages at once, and I can reorder the pages. For example, move this one over here. And then I can even um, delete pages, so I'll delete this page, so now it just has two pages. And I can easily manipulate pages so I can add pages in and take pages out uh, between different PDF documents very easily, so that's great. Okay, so that's PDF Pen, very handy. This is the Finder, which opened up, if you remember when I used Quicksilver to type the word Documents, it opens up with this tool called the Finder, which allows me to see things like my desktop. So here's everything that I have on my desktop. It allows me to see my, my home folder. The Finder allows me to see my Applications folder, my Documents folder, my Movies and Music and Pictures folders, etc. It lets me to search for uh, documents that I've opened today or yesterday or in the past week, etc. So when you're first using the Mac and you're not very good with the Mac and you feel lost, you can come back to the Finder uh, to to kind of find your way around. And the way that you can open the Finder, worst case scenario, you can just go up to the spotlight and just type the word Finder. And I suppose that would probably open it, although I think what I would do instead is I would probably look for a folder name. Like, uh, I tell you what, here's an even easier way. Just double click on your hard drive and it'll open your hard drive up in the Finder. And all that is on the left side. And again, Quicksilver is um, an add on that you have to download, it doesn't come standard with the Mac. Let me tell you a little bit about Mail. Uh, Mac Mail is excellent. I was a, a hardcore Out Outlook user before, and I was very worried about the switch between Outlook and, and a non-Outlook -Out mail tool. But one thing that I love about Mac Mail is that it, it works very well with uh, with IMAP, which Outlook never played nicely with IMAP. And here's some of the neat things about the Mac Mail tool. One thing that I really like about it is that uh, there's this separate tool called Text Expander. And Text Expander allows me to define keyword, or sorry, a, a couple characters that will substitute for an entire paragraph. Let me try to explain. For example, if I type the letters S D H, it pops open my signature. So I've predefined that anytime I type S D H, it pops open a, a piece of text which happens to be my signature. Or if I type S D A H, it pops open a different signature. Or if I type I have tons of them. Let me actually go to the Text Expander tool. Or, you know what, the way that I usually open it is just by going, uh, by pressing Control Spacebar to open up Quicksilver, and then I type T. And since I always open Text Expander when I type T, Quicksilver is smart enough to know that I'm trying to get to Text Expander because that's what I use most when I type the letter T. So it automatically gives me that as a first preference. So here you can see that, for example, I have this this shortcut called MFC, which I call Drodeo Coffee. And here's the text that I want to automatically put in. I can put in whatever's in my, saved my clipboard. So for example, if I were to copy a name into my clipboard, it would put the name in here, and then a block of text. So let's try it. So I'm going to type um, Jamie, for example, and I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to say Apple C to copy the name Jamie and then I'm going to delete it. So now the word Jamie is in my is copied to my clipboard. So now I'm going to type MFC and you'll see it says Jamie comma just just left you a message are you still looking to buy in XXX? I might say McLean Virginia and then and then I can send send this email off except I probably would want to put my signature in. So I'm going to say regards Drodeo and then I'm going to type SDH and then it pops my signature in. So it's great. It's uh, very handy and uh, allows me to keep from having to repeat text over and over again. Uh, so anything that you write all the time, you should just put into Text Expander. 
Again, Text Expander is uh, an add-on that you have to Google to find. Another thing about MacMail is that by default it shows this preview window on the left side, but being very comfortable and familiar with Outlook, I wanted it to show on the right side. So there is a an add-on call, called Wide Mail, W-I-D-E-M-A-I-L, that allows you to, uh, to, to preview your mail on the right. And you can see on the left here I have all sorts of different folders, and sometimes I don't, well often actually, I don't want to have to drag an email into a certain folder, like this is basically spam, and I don't want to have to drag this into my spam folder, so there's another tool called Mail Act On, which is A-C-T-O-N, Mail Act On, that allows me to specify keywords. So I've specified that anytime I type, I hold down the control key and press X, it is going to move the message into my spam folder, and now it's gone or for this one I'm, I'm going to say control C and it's going to move it into my clients folder so this is uh, very handy it, it keeps me from having to actually manually move all of my mail into folders I can just press shortcut keys to move you know either one mail at a time or blocks of mail you know I could highlight 10 pieces of mail at once like for example you know here's three pieces of mail and I can press a shortcut key, or I'll, I'll, I'll actually just take these two. And I can say Control C, and they're both moved into uh, my, my client's folder. So that's, that's very handy as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close Mail here. I'm going to close Text Expander. Here's another thing about the Mac that um, will help you the Apple at the top left is basically where you can go to always find your system preferences so it doesn't matter what application you're in just click on the Apple and say system preferences and this will allow you to change all sorts of things about your Mac so you might want to play around in here you can change you know your desktop the way it looks your screensaver um, there's software updates you can get from here um, at any rate it's very useful so make sure that you play around in there a bit there's also a tool called which w-i-t-c-h that I like that allows me to do the following when I press Apple tab I get this which is just the regular tool that lets me uh, switch between applications but if I have for example let me open mail again so I'm gonna press control spacebar I'm gonna type M the word mail comes up I press enter so let's say that I have a couple emails open at once so let me go ahead and just open up a couple emails here open this one up so if I were to Apple tab all these different emails that I have open don't show in this view so I I might want to be able to switch between my mail so you, if you install the add-on which it allows you to press option tab and it shows you the specific um, things that you have open like for example in stickies I have a number of stickies open here um, or in mail I've got three pieces of mail open so which is nice because it gives you a more in-depth view than just the regular um, Apple tab I don't know why Apple doesn't make that standard but they don't so which has come in to save the day on that one and delete this email from Costco okay so I'm gonna close mail Another thing about the Mac that was disconcerting to me at first was that there's n there aren't two buttons on the mouse, which I, I actually haven't missed, but anytime you do need to right click, like if I wanted to right click on this, I just hold down the control button and I, pr and I click, and that lets me right click, but there's really nothing to do in here. I mean, I can choose which program to open it with, but it already defaults to a certain program, uh, so that's not really all that useful. Um, I just never have the need to right click. I can't explain it. I guess Apple just makes it so simple. It's great. Another thing that I do is I run Windows on my Mac. So if I press again Control Spacebar, I can start typing the word Parallels, which is the program that I use. And when I do that, it's going to open up this uh, this tool, this program called Parallels, which allows me to run Windows. So let me show you how that works. I just press Start and you'll see here that it's going to open up Windows 
So here's Windows. Now I have a Start button down here, and this is a uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer window, which um, you know Apple doesn't have Internet Explorer. So sometimes, really, that's why I run Parallels is because sometimes I need to open programs up that only work on on um, Internet Explorer. So at any rate, it's uh, it's very handy. I have four gigs of uh, of RAM on my computer. If I had any less, I used to run two gigs. It wasn't quite enough, but with four gigs, it works pretty well. So here's IE, and it opens up. And actually, Windows runs faster on the Mac than it ever did on my PC, which I, I thought was interesting. And now, when I Apple Tab, you'll see that there's this little Parallels icon, and all of the windows that I have open on the Windows side show in my Apple tab, which is great. I mean, it just it's very seamless. And then I can go back to Safari. So here's Safari, and you'll see that Internet Explorer is running in a window right behind it. I can click on it. I can bring it to the front, and now I have Safari, which is actually running on the Mac side right behind it. So I, I found it to be great. The only thing I don't like about Parallels and the Mac is that they don't play very nicely with USB. So if I plug a USB device in, while I'm running Parallels, I have to actually go up to, I believe it's Devices, USB, and then uncheck it so that the Windows side doesn't take over the USB um, item uh, and not let the Mac have access to it. But besides that, it's great. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and I'll go ahead and shut Parallels down. So I'm just going to say Apple Q to quit Parallels. And now you'll see down here that there's a little hourglass through the Parallels. It's shutting down and it just closed. So let me see what else I wanted to tell you about. I think that might be pretty much it. Oh, the, one last thing that I'll tell you about are widgets. Oh, and this is great. I use this all the time. It's called, uh, it's from CallWave. It's a widget that you can install. Widgets are just um, little um, little applications, but I use this all the time. It's a text messaging tool that allows me to send text messages to people. So, for example, if I want to text message myself, I'll just go down to my name, Daniel Odio, and then I can send hi, um, be at the restaurant at 8 p.m., and then I say send, and it sends this to my phone. So, I can very easily send text messages to anyone whether they're in my address book or if I have to write the number in here. Even internationally, I can send text messages and they're all free. So that's great. In order to um, add different applications, you just click on the plus that's at the bottom left and it lets you choose different applications to add. So highly recommend the CallWave widget. There's also a calculator that I use often. Um, you know, there's a monitor here, there's a home calculator. And if I just press F12, function 12, it takes me in and out of the widgets. So that's that's very nice. All right, well, again, my name is Daniel Odio. Hope you enjoy the intro to the Mac. If you're like me, you probably need about a week to get used to it, and then you'll just never look back afterwards. So enjoy it.